So as I've just said, atoms want to fill their outer electron shells. And they're going to find a way to get or give away electrons in order to have this happen. The result of giving away or stealing or sharing electrons becomes a chemical bond. And you can see here some of the main atoms that we're interested in. Um, here are our big ones. Let's find them. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. There are our biggies. Now, the first energy level can hold two electrons. The second can hold eight electrons. And the third can also hold eight electrons. Okay. So let's talk about hydrogen. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one. That means it has one proton and one electron. So hydrogen is going to put that one electron right here in its first energy level. One is not two, so hydrogen isn't stable yet. It needs at least one more electron to become stable. If it was to gain one more, it would have two electrons in that first energy level and be stable. It can gain one, or it can give one, or it can share one. Let's consider something that has, we need to fill up a little bit more, carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six. Okay, let's fill in our electrons. I have six electrons to place. So two go in the first energy level. That means I have four electrons in the second energy level. Carbon isn't happy. It has four electrons and it needs eight to be satisfied. So it has to find another way to get those four electrons. It could give away its four, it could steal four, or if it's shared with another atom, it could share four electrons. Nitrogen has atomic number seven. So again, two in the first energy level, five in the second. We need three more in order to fulfill that octet rule and be satisfied. Oxygen, atomic number eight, has two in the first and six in the second. Again, not eight. It needs two more in order to be satisfied. The periodic table arranges these atoms nicely so that you can tell without having to do all the counting again what all of the atoms in a column and how they'll behave. So for example, in the column with oxygen here, oxygen has eight. It has what we call six valence electrons. Six electrons in that outermost energy level. Every atom in that same column as oxygen also has six valence electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so everything in nitrogen's column also has five valence electrons. So you can predict the behavior of these different atoms based on the column that they're in. Let's take a look at sodium and chlorine. Now, sodium and chlorine aren't exactly equally matched. Sodium and chlorine are going to form what we call ions. And ions form when we gain or lose electrons. So that is we have a different number of electrons than protons. So protons do not equal electrons in an ion. When are we likely to gain or lose? Well, if I want eight valence electrons and I only have one, what's easier for me to do? To gain or lose electrons. It's easier for me to lose that one than to gain seven to be satisfied. So sodium, who has one valence electron, is going to give that one valence electron up. When it gives it up, giving is a very positive thing. So that sodium is going to become a positive ion because it gave away an electron. If I give away electrons, I have more protons than I do electrons, and I become a cat ion. Quick trick to remember, cat has the letter T in it. T is, it looks like a plus sign, so cat ions are positive. Now chlorine, on the other hand, chlorine's a bit of a bully. Chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So what's it easier to do? To gain an electron, one, or to lose seven? It's easier to gain that one electron. So it's going to steal an electron from another atom.
So it's going to become a negative ion because it stole electrons. So in this example, for a negative ion, then we have fewer protons and electrons. Remember, protons are forever. The protons aren't changing. It's the number of electrons. And I've become an anion. Now, opposites always attract. So now I have this positive sodium cation and this negative chlorine anion. It's a match made in heaven. They're going to attract each other because one has a plus one charge, one has a negative one charge. Opposites attract and a beautiful thing is born. We have sodium chloride, salt. And you can see here, it's a compound, a fixed ratio. For every sodium, we have a chloride, a chlorine atom. So one to one ratio. And I can form this matrix, which is salt. Now covalent bonds are a little bit different. Covalent bonds happen when we share electrons. So that means that no one is really strong enough to tear the other electrons away from another atom. So Covalent bonds form what we call molecules. Molecules are held together by covalent bonds, and covalent bonds are the strongest type of bond that we do talk about in here. They come in two flavors. We'll talk about both nonpolar covalent bonds, which mean that we have an equal sharing of electrons. We'll also talk about polar covalent bonds. And polar covalent bonds are an unequal sharing of electrons. So we're still sharing, but it's like playing tug of war when two teams aren't equally matched. Neither one is strong enough to pull the other into the mud, but strong enough that we're sharing unequally. Here's a few examples. Hydrogen. Hydrogen forms a covalent bond with another hydrogen atom forming this molecule here, H2. Each hydrogen needs one more electron to be satisfied. So if they share with each other, then they have their two electrons in that first energy level. Oxygen can form a double bond. A double bond, as seen here, means that we're sharing two pairs of electrons, so four in total. Whereas in a single bond, we're sharing only one pair of electrons. So we have two electrons shared in total. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. It needs eight, so it needs to gain two more electrons. So if one oxygen shares its two electrons with another oxygen, then together they have a double bond, and both oxygen atoms have eight electrons in that outermost energy level. Hydrocarbons. Compounds formed with hydrogen and carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons. It needs four more. So if it bonds with four hydrogens, one, two, three, four, then everyone's happy. Everyone's full and satisfied. It's when electrons aren't full, kind of like when you've had Thanksgiving dinner and you're not quite full yet. You're still a little feisty. You want your pie. If you've had your full course meal, including your dessert, you're ready to kind of chill out. You're stable. But until you get full, until you get those eight valence electrons, you're going to form interactions with other atoms to try and get those eight. Water is an important one. Water forms unequal sharing, and remember that that's called a polar covalent bond. Polar covalent bonds and regular nonpolar covalent bonds, they're both very strong, they're both equally strong, but polar covalent bonds cause molecules to behave a little bit differently, and we'll talk about that in great detail when we talk about water. So, these molecules, they're competing for those shared electrons, and we call this, this attraction for electrons, electronegativity. And the more electronegative you are, the more you're pulling on those electrons. So if something is really electronegative and shares with something that is a smaller electronegativity, we're going to have that unequal sharing. Let's check out the periodic table and see what some of the ranges are. So I've highlighted the properties of electronegativity here for us to discuss. And if I just scroll over some of these, 
various atoms. We can see here that hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. And if we compare that to oxygen, oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.44. It's the second most electronegative element on the periodic table, second only to fluorine, which has an electronegativity almost of 4, 3.98. Oxygen is the most electronegative atom that we're concerned with in living systems. So oxygen is a big bully. When it shares with just about anyone, it's going to form a polar covalent bond. If we have huge differences in electronegativity, say greater than a difference of two, we're going to form more ionic type bonds. Kind of in that middle range, 1.9 to about 0.5, that's going to form us a polar covalent bond. And if there's a difference smaller than 0.5 between two atoms' electronegativity, typically we're going to form a nonpolar covalent bond. Let's take a look at water. Water forms a polar covalent bond. And that's because water has a really high electronegativity. And hydrogen has a much smaller electronegativity. Not so small that oxygen can rip the electrons away from hydrogen, but enough that those electrons hang out with oxygen more than they hang out with hydrogen. This makes the oxygen end of water a little bit negative, and sometimes you'll see it denoted by this partial charge symbol. And it makes the hydrogen end a little bit positive, because the electrons are mostly up here, okay, and not down at the hydrogen end. This polar molecule now has a slight charge. Overall, the net charge is zero. That's important. The charges balance out. This is not an ion. But because, like a magnet, different parts of the molecule have a slight charge, it means it's going to interact with different molecules. Remember that opposites attract. So if I bring two water molecules together, the negative oxygen end of one water molecule is going to be attracted to the positive hydrogen end of another water molecule. This forms a bond that's incredibly important for life on this planet called the hydrogen bond. These are weak ionic bonds, ionic because it's due to attraction between charges, and these weak hydrogen bonds make things like raindrops and insects and surface tension possible. They make it possible for that huge oak tree growing in the field to get water from the roots and fight and defy gravity all the way up to the leaves. And that's going to be our next topic of conversation. Make sure you check out resources online. If you belong to the Campbell website, mybiology.com, make sure you check out those videos and tutorials there. I'll see you next time. Ciao.